Hey guys, this is Vivek here. Welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss this topic that why mains and common terminals in a watt meter are not internally shorted. This was one of the question I was asked about and we will know here in detail that what are the different terminals that we have in a watt meter and what is this mains and common terminals. Let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the notification of every single video I make. Now. A wattmeter is a device that we use to measure active power across a load or across three phase load. So this is the connection across a load. You here you can see a load is connected and this is the wattmeter that we have. In a wattmeter there are four most important terminals that is the mains, load, common and voltage that is M, L, C and V. These terminals are named according to the side they are connected to. So the upper one, the upper coil that you are seeing is the current coil and the lower one is the pressure coil. And for all practical purposes, we connect the current coil in series because it has to carry the load current and the pressure coil is connected in parallel because it is used to measure the load voltage. Now the M is connected to the main side and hence it is named like M. L is connected to the load side. C or common terminal is named like that because this is the common junction of both the current coil and pressure coil in a practical watt meter usage and V is the voltage. Now what we see is that in all practical situations as I mentioned here you can see that we are measuring power across a single load or even if we are measuring power across three phase load the main and common terminals are shorted. But these terminals are not internally connected even though in all practical situation we need them to be connected rather we make these connections externally. So here we will discuss in detail that why it is like that why these connections are not made internally here also you can see in this real picture that there are four terminals available externally and two of them are for the current coil and another two are for the pressure coil and the M and C terminals are not connected internally rather we make these connections externally. So let us discuss what is the what are the reasons. So the first reason in this line is creeping test. Now we know in an energy meter that we have there is a disc that keeps on rotating under the magnetic field flux effect of the current coil and pressure coil and depending on the resultant magnetic field flux the disc rotates and the number of revolutions decides how much power is being consumed by the load over a certain period of time. But what it has been found that in some energy meters the disc begins to rotate just under the effect of pressure coil and not affected by the current coil. That is let's say we have a system like this this is the AC supply and we are connecting our current coil like this and the pressure coil is connected something like this but there is no actual loading the load is not connected over here okay let's say something like this the load is not connected but still the energy meter disc will rotate and it will take some reading into account so this is an error because we are not using any power here there is no power usage by the load but still the watt meter or the energy meter that we have will show some reading just under the effect of pressure coil. Why the pressure coil has an effect over the reading because it is only the pressure coil which is connected to the supply side and current coil is not carrying any magnetic field flux. So under the effect of magnetic field flux generated by the pressure coil and the friction of the disc the disc begins to rotate. This is known as creeping and to find out how much of the creeping effect is happening we need to disconnect this current coil altogether from the watt meter and we just energize this pressure coil. We do this test to find out how much creeping error is happening so that we can take corrective measures to avoid the creeping effect. So if the M and C terminals of the watt meter are internally shorted it will be impossible for us to conduct the creeping test. The second reason or you can say the advantage that we have is measurement of reactive power using watt meter. So I have made a video on this topic that how you can measure reactive power across a load. You can find out that video the link is in the description as well as in the I section up here. Now 
I'm not going to discuss the overall uh, reason how the watt meter connection will help us to find out the reactive power but I will show you just how the connections must be made for measuring the reactive power across three phase load. So the connection that we need to do for reactive power measurement is something like this. Let's say this is the first phase. So the current coil is connected in series to the first phase and the pressure coil is connected between the two of the other phases that we have something like this. Once we do this connection across a star connected three phase load, we will be able to find out what is the reactive power across the load. So this is how reactive power measurement can be done. Now if both of these terminals like this one and this one is internally shorted, it will be impossible for us to conduct the reactive power test. And hence it's an added advantage that we have when both of these terminals are not internally connected. The third and the most important reason in this line is phantom loading. Now over the time after certain uses or even if we have a new watt meter, if we want to test it out that if it is giving the correct reading or not, what we need to do? We need to connect the watt meter across a load and we will take a standard watt meter and we will tally both the results and this is called the calibration of watt meter. So by tallying we can find out how much deviation between the standard watt meter and actual watt meter or the test watt meter is there and depending on that we can find out if there is any error and how much percentage of error is happening. So for testing purpose let's say we have a watt meter which has rating 220 volt 5 amps. Now that means we need to connect this watt meter which has this current coil and pressure coil. We need to connect this watt meter across a load which is taking 5 amps of current at 220 volt. Okay, so the pressure coil will be reading 220 volt and the current coil will be reading 5 amps of current. Now if you want to find out that how much power loss is happening across the watt meter. It is important because we don't want to unnecessarily lose out our power across the watt meter because here we are not connecting any actual load rather we are just testing the watt meter and hence the testing must be done in an economical way. So if we try to find out what is the current what is the power loss across the current coil. So it is connected to 220 volt and the current going across it is 5 amps. So it is V times I that is 220 times 5 and it will give us 1100 watt. Okay. Similarly for the pressure coil we need to find out what is the resistance. So the resistance if mentioned we can find out by using V square upon R that is the voltage squared, the supply voltage squared divided by the resistance of the pressure coil. Now what we are seeing here is that the power loss across the current coil in an actual loading uh, at the full rate, at the full reading is 1100 watt which is alarming because this amount of power is just being wasted as we are not using it across any real load rather we are using this power for testing purpose. So in order to avoid this what we do is that we disconnect the current coil from the watt meter and we connect it across a small voltage source which is able to drive the rated current. So let's say we have this uh, another voltage source which is 10 volt but it is able to drive 5 amps of current. So we will connect the current coil across this source and the power loss across the current coil now is 10 times 5 that is 50 watts. So you can see that how the power loss in the first case was 11, 1100 watts and now it is just 50 watts. So we have reduced the power loss across the current coil. The pressure coil however is still connected to 220 volt like this because for the pressure coil it is important that it is connected across the rated voltage irrespective of the load and the current coil for the current coil it is important that it is connected across the rated current source irrespective of what is the source voltage. This is an economical way of measuring how if the watt meter is giving the correct reading or not and we are in this process not losing out any power. Also one more added advantage is that in the previous case where there was so much of power loss there will be a huge amount of heat generated which can affect the actual result but here in this case 
the power loss is low and hence the there is no misreading that we can have through the watt meter or energy meter this is known as phantom loading and it is a fancy name given to this test because there is no actual load connected across the current coil still we are able to read some power and it looks like the whole watt meter is connected across the rated load which is drawing 5 amps of current from 220 volt source but it is not like that and hence it is known as the phantom loading so these are some of the reasons why a watt meter has two of these terminals not internally shorted rather we need to make these connections externally and i hope you have liked this video and if you have liked this video press the like button share this video with your friends let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video if you have any doubt any query any suggestion or any feedback you can put them in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the notification of every single video I make. This is Vivek Chauve and I will see you next time.